creatures that have what's called eye shine, like Pumbaa, for instance. Very, very strong eye shine. I made Carol and Pumbaa sit for this photograph, and it was really rough on Carol because she doesn't like bright lights. I said, I want you and Pumbaa to like, sit there and stare at me, open-eyed, and I'm going to flash the camera at you like three feet from you and take this photo. And she allowed me to do this. Carol has red eye, and Pumbaa has this like, bright flash. It's kind of like blue-ish, OK, blue-ish. Reddish dogs have blue eye, humans have red eye, but it's also much brighter. In the next frame, this is the image intensity reduced by about a factor of 100. And what happens is, all you see is the glowing demonic eyes of Carol here, and then, and then there's kind of like <laughs> strong eye shine from Pumbaa, very, very bright here. So Pumbaa has basically mirrors at the back of his eyeball. And there's a layer called the tapetum lucidum. But here's the interesting question. How do you do this? How do you make something that's shiny out of stuff which is clear? Because you are made out of stuff which is clear. So how do you make something that's reflective? And what you do is you have thin films, OK? Here's another animal with a great, great eye, eye shine, sharks. And if you took, I showed this at the start of the semester. And I said we'd come back to this point. It's like if, I, if you took this picture, it's a flash photograph, and it's like, and you have a digital camera underwater, and you see this on the thing. I would have like totally wet myself because <laughs> it's a shark, and its its eyes are glowing yellow. And how freaky! It, I mean, it just makes it appear that much freakier. Here's how sharks do it, and sharks have the strongest eye shine of any creature that I was able to find, and they do it like this. In the back of the retina, there's a layer of cells, and underneath that layer of cells is a layer of crystals of guanine, and underneath that is another layer of cells. Here's why. Light goes through the retina. It goes through the, the, like the, the cones and rods and all that stuff. Hits this layer, gets reflected back. It basically gives them another chance. It gives the, the cells of the retina another chance to detect that light. And so it enhances sensitivity in dim light conditions, which would be really helpful if you were like a predator who hunts at dawn and dusk, like Pumbaa. Or if you're like a shark, which is hunt, hunting in the deep ocean where there's not necessarily so much light around. And the reflection works like this. There's a reflection from the layer between the cells. There's a, layer, there's a reflection at the front layer, and there's a reflection at the back layer. And if the difference that these two rays have traveled is equal to one wavelength, I have a strong constructive interference. And so I get a, a very, very bright reflection. But it only happens for certain colors. Question, if I have light of wavelength 600 nanometers in air, and it passes into this layer of crystals, what happens to the wavelength, larger, smaller, when it goes into the layer of crystals? Does the wavelength increase or does the wavelength decrease? Decreases. It gets shorter because of the index of refraction. So it's going to decrease. What is the wavelength? Well, the relationship for that, of course, is in this layer, the wavelength is equal to the wavelength in air divided by the index of refraction, 1.83. If it's 600 nanometers in air, in the layer, it's 330 nanometers. That's the number that we need to use. Now, since there's a reflection from the front and the back, in order to have constructive interference, the path length difference has to be equal to one wavelength, or two wavelengths, or three wavelengths. We're going to look at one wavelength. Path length difference is one wavelength. But the path length difference. The effective distance is not just one times the thickness, two times the thickness. It's two times the thickness plus a half wavelength. And that's described in some detail in the textbook. So take a look at that and see why that's true. But the effective path length difference, two times the thickness of the layer plus one half of the wavelength. So then the question is this. If a layer of crystals is 80 nanometers thick, what is the longest wavelength for which there's constructive interference and then what is this wavelength in air? Here's how we solve for that. The longest wavelength, which is constructive wave interference, it's just going to be path length difference is just equal to lambda. But the effective path length difference is two times the thickness of the layer plus one half lambda. Or one half lambda is equal to two times the thickness. The thickness is equal to lambda divided by four. That's what I have in this case. Or lambda is equal to 4 times the thickness. Well, if the thickness of the layer is 80 nanometers, the wavelength 
for constructive interference is four times 80, 320 nanometers, okay? 320 nanometers. That's the wavelength, but that's the wavelength in the crystals. Wavelength in air, bigger or smaller than this? Bigger. And to go from air into the crystals, I divide by 1.83. To go from the crystals into air, what do I have to do? Multiply by 1.83. So it's 320 nanometers in the air. I'm sorry, in the crystals, in the air. It's 320 nanometers times 1.83, which is 590 nanometers. And what part of the spectrum would you imagine that that was in? It's in the visible light spectrum, but what color would you guess? Green is like 500, 550 kind of range. Yellow? It's between red and green, and so it's yellow. And so this is in the yellow part of the spectrum. And actually, these are real numbers for a real creature, and the real numbers for a real creature, specifically this creature right here. And it's useful for this creature to be able to see yellow because in the deep ocean, the blue kind of all scatters out. The reds don't make it so much. It's the middle of the rainbow that works, that makes it down there. And so they're able, they're most sensitive to that. Dogs hunting after dark, they're going to be wanting to sense what color of light? Blues. And so dogs tend to have blue eye shine and watch for this. It's really, it's really quite something. <laughs>